What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Lockout Men Podcast Show. Thank you for listening. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that share button, and all those other buttons that'll help you make this channel great. So let's jump right into it. So I got a text from my 216-206-60-20090. And uh, that's the way you guys could reach out to me. If you guys have any questions, comments, or you want to get on to the show, hit that test number, 216-600-2090. And in this text, it, they had an issue with their company. And they were saying a lot of things in it. They were saying that, yo, I make a lot of money with this company. And I don't want to leave the company because of the money that I'm making. But there's a lot of weird things that goes on with this company. Things that I honestly don't like. I, I, he says in the text that I don't like the direction of this company and the direction that it's going. And he kind of asked me, like, he said, well, what would you do, Lockout? Would you stay with the company for the money, or would you try to look somewhere else to see if they can match the kind of money that you're making and see if you can be better off on the other side of the gra- other side of the fence? Look at here. There's going to be companies that you're going to feel some kind of way about. In the beginning... When you get to that company, after you you get on, after the recruiter tells you things wasn't to fruition when you actually came on with a company, but the company was paying you good, and that was one of the reasons why you stayed on. I don't have a situation like that. You know what I'm saying? The company I'm with is pretty good for what it is the owner of the company is very strict all right i'm just going to put that out there he's very strict but this is his company and he built this company the way it is it is a successful company he didn't build this company on lackadaisical shit he built this company to what it is today not only that he has the trucking side, but he also has the brokerage side. So the owner of this company is well-versed in, in, in every aspect of trucking. And that's what I respect him about. Now, a couple of people came through and left and fell some kind of way. But for me, the company pays you good. Company pays me good. One thing that I learned is not to question nothing anymore. There's a lot of weird stuff in the directions and stuff like that, but it's not for me to question. Like I said before, I'm a company driver. I'm comfortable being a comfortable, I'm comfortable being a company driver. As long as I get my settlements at the end of the week, I'm good. I get home when I need to get home. I, if I need some off days, I get the off days that I need it. I got a clean truck. I got a good running truck. Every weekend, they make sure that the truck is well maintained. I have a few, I had a few breakdowns, but I have no issues of getting the truck back up and running. I put maybe close to 200,000 miles on this truck within the time that I've been here. My settlements are awesome. I got a hell of a pay raise that I didn't expect to get. I've been in a couple of skirmishes with the company. And in the beginning, to be honest, in the beginning, it was rough going for me. I had to get used. I had to get used to a lot of things that this company was about that I wasn't even used to or privy to. But I had to get used to it. Now, would I say, hey, let me go ahead and 
look across the way and see what's the, and see what's good. Maybe there is something else good on the other side of the fence. But see, the thing is, here's the thing. I don't think any companies will match what I'm making. Com I'm, I'm talking about companies. Maybe an owner operator will probably match what I'm making. Maybe a company that sees me for the driver that I am and pay me what I am worth. But over here, I feel that I am getting paid what I'm worth. I come in, I do my job, I go home. A ain't no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And again, like I said before, it is not, it is not for me to question what the owner does with this company. If the owner turns around and say, hey, I want my truck this way, or I want my truck to run this way, or whatever the case, which has been brought on, brought on to me, like he wants the truck fifth wheel at a certain point. I can't move the fifth wheel because the owner wants the fifth wheel to be set at a certain point. Me personally, I like the fifth wheel to be slid a little bit so I can have a, so I can have a better turning radius. That's just me, but the owner don't want the fifth wheel to be moved. He wants the fifth wheel to be set in one place and that's it. Is it for me to question that? No, this is his truck. It ain't my truck. It's his truck. I remember one time my fleet manager told me like, yo, lockout, I need you to stop what you're doing and go and get the truck washed. And I'm like, yo, bro, I'm in the middle of a load right now. For real. He's like, yeah, do it. <laughs> Is that for me to question that? Should I call him up and say, why? Oh, I'm in the middle of the load. Or yada, yada. No, it ain't for me to question. It's, it's for me to find a blue beacon, which he has. Go to Blue Beacon and get his truck washed. Like I said, the only issue or the only problem, there's not even a problem. I will say the only issue, if I was ever put in a position to, to do that, is the other company going to match what I'm making? And nine times out of ten, no. So, if you feel some kind of way about a company, but you're making good money. If you're making good money at that company and you feel some kind of way about that company, I would say kind of push that deep into the gut. If the money's good and you still getting home when you need to get home, then I will push through it. That's what I would do. I will push through it because Ain't no other company out here is going to match what you're making. If you've been with the company for two, three, four, five years, and you're, you had raises every year, let's just say you went from making 50 cent a mile all the way up to 80 cent a mile as a company driver, as a W-2 driver, benefit driver, 401k driver, then it's going to kind of be hard to go to another company and garner 80 cent benefits, W-2, 401k. You got to start all over except for your 401k. Your 401k will follow you, but you're going to have to start all over. And start all over with the amount that they want to bring you in at. So if you say like a seven year driver and you making about 80 cent, 80, 85 cent a mile. And you coming over to, to a different company. What well, other than maybe an owner op or maybe a mom and pop company. Then yeah, it's going to, it's going to kind of be hard to get the money that you're, that you're making now. So again, I, just push all that stuff down in the gut and just roll with it. It's not your company, you're a company driver. So 
Just do what you need. Just do what you do. Come in, drive safe, get the get the loads there on time, no pussyfooting. And if the if the owner of the company or the fleet manager will kind of like give you some crazy stuff or whatever, push through it. Push through it because you're getting paid good. That's all. You're getting paid good. You getting paid good, especially 80 cent. And you only been with the company for what, three, three years, and you already getting 80 cent a mile? Now, there are some companies that bring you in at 80 cent a mile, but you still wanna start over though. You're gonna still start over. So if the company is being weird or whatever, and they're not going out of business, then push through. That's that's all I gotta say about that. There's something in the air tonight. Got a feeling coming over me. I swear that this is that place to be in the water. In the, the water.